On today's Pro Presenter Show, brought to you by ChurchTechU.com, I was wrong about PowerPoint. In a good way. Hi, I'm Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com, where you can find hours of Church Tech tutorials, just like this one, courses in my exclusive community, ChurchTechU.com because ministry loves company. I just got back from a week-long gig where I got to run ProPresenter for a corporate cl client and I had a great time. One thing that happened as a result of this trip is that I got to play with the integration between Pro 6 and PowerPoint. Boy was I surprised. It used to be that uh, ProPresenter needed an older version of PowerPoint to work and I thought it just basically exported still, so you lost all the ability to edit. Whether that was ever true or I w it was just something I was confused about, I've been telling people bad information. So let me show you on my computer just how it works. First, make sure that you have PowerPoint on your computer. The home version of Office is about $10 a month, and I believe it's fine to use that for the, the church. There is a nonprofit program but you might not, depending on your church, be able to agree to all their non-discrimination policies. Either way, it's pretty cheap. $3 a month for the nonprofit version or $10 for the home version. Once an office is installed, make sure that you open it at least once to get past all the look at all the good stuff the PowerPoint can do screens. I don't think it'll affect things, but Pro 6 does open PowerPoint, so it might. Now, go to File, Import, Import PowerPoint. Next, navigate to the file that you want to import. Once you've done that, a dialog box will pop up asking how you want to import it. Here are your choices. Import all slides as JPEG images, import text objects as ProPresenter slide elements, or import text and graphic objects as ProPresenter slide elements. Note, if I'm remembering correct, uh, Pro 6 for Windows has another option. It allows you to import animations too. I only played with the PC version of this for a day on my recent trip freelancing for a company that used ProPresenter to add motion backgrounds to their slides, so I could be remembering it wrong. So back to this. Which should you choose? Well, it depends. Don't you hate that answer? I know I do, but in this case it's true. Normally, I'd choose import text and graphic objects as ProPresenter slide elements. That gives you the greatest flexibility. Once you do it, you can treat the PowerPoint as if it's a ProPresenter file and do what you normally would do with it. You might need to do some tweaking as the text box sizes go, but generally you'll get the best results with this one. If the PowerPoint you bring in is just text or you know the images aren't helpful, then choose the second one. If you want the PowerPoint to look identical to the original, minus any animations, then uh, choose this first one. So here's what the last one does. I click open, wait just a minute while it crunches on this, and there it is. Notice that this is 4x3, but I'm outputting 16x9, so I'm going to click up here as I normally would, and that fixes that nice and easy. I can also apply templates like I normally would in PowerPoint, or in ProPresenter rather. So, and I can also do some quick edits on the text. So, 
So that's the basics of importing PowerPoint into ProPresenter. Quick story. Before I tried this, I actually sent a newsletter out saying that ProPresenter couldn't edit imported PowerPoint files. Someone kindly pointed out that I was wrong, and boy, and I'm I glad they did. I get stuff wrong all the time, and I'm glad this was one of those things because it's so much better than I imagined. Now you can import your pastor's notes that look like they were created in Office 95 and make them look like something that fits with the rest of the service. When a missionary stops by with a PowerPoint, you can make it more engaging. When a lay teacher speaks at your recovery ministry, you don't have to spend extra time fixing black text on a white background so you can apply a template instead. This technique really frees you up to present the information in the best possible way, even if you don't start with the best file type. That's what's great about ProPresenter. It gives you flexibility you wouldn't otherwise have. If you like this tutorial, go ahead and subscribe and hit the little bell icon on YouTube to make sure you hear all about all my videos when they come out. But if you'd like a deeper dive into ProPresenter, I think you'd like to take one of my ProPresenter mini courses for free. Just go to tdm.fyi slash pro, the number six, mini, M-I-N-I, -I, and sign up for the mini course of your choice for free. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com. Go out and change eternity. <laughs>